I'm definitely going to be throwing some shade. it's important we saw this one very early now we know politically there's been a lot of things going on in america and it really hasn't done anything that would essentially help our people but that's where i'm gonna lead this discussion at tonight but before i get too serious ladies and gentlemen yesterday i celebrated my birthday happy birthday to me and uh, my wife took me out to dinner and she gave me some very, very great gifts. Let me tell you. So the gifts are so great. I thought I would share with you guys. First and foremost, she bought me a very um, nice leather cigar traveling case. I know, right? You, you thought it was like a hygiene kit like I thought it was. And, you know, you have your cigars in this side, the temperature pack. Your, your cutter, and then your, your your lighter over here. So very, very nice. It's magnetized in there. Um, cigar traveling slash carrying case, okay? What's going on, Jerome Jones? Okay. The, now, these two next gifts, I really can't. Hmm. I don't know which one to say first, but I'm just going to go with the Tom Ford fucking fabulous cologne. Um, she knows I've been eyeing this for a very long time. I will, we weren't searching out and looking for it at a, a point, and she just decided to bless me with the Tom Ford fucking fabulous cologne. Not the spray, the cologne. Okay? It smells very, very nice. Let me tell you, I'm wearing it now, and that bottle, you shouldn't be using it every day because if you look at the price tag, <clears throat> shit, it puts some people out of college, right? Last but not least, the, sec the third gift that my wife gave me is a watch I've been eyeing for a very long time. And for you guys who know about watches, this is the Citizen with an Eco Drive. Okay, Citizen with the Eco Drive. Um, this one, and the Eco Drive simply means that any light can power it. Like for less than, and, and I mean, you name it, any light can, well, can fire light charge it? <laughs> That's a good question I should ask Citizen. Can fire light, you know, the light that you get from the fire? Anyway, again, that's what the third gift she gave me was a citizen watch. I've been um, I've been wanting a citizen for a very long time. I think my next move up in watches should be a tag. OK, now, with all that being said, just to kind of invite you guys into the space It's almost like I'm drinking plantation. Look that up. Um, believe it. Yeah. Like I'm drinking plantation. Look it up. Very smooth. Wow. So much to talk about tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think I'm going to start off and let you guys know that we've been in this country longer than any other people. Look that up as well. We've been in this country longer than any other people. We're, we're talking about when the Moors were exploring the world. Okay? We're under this government Right, that we have allowed these people to take our land because we understand there's this a large controversy, which it really isn't, that a lot of Black Americans are actually American Indians, aka Native Americans. So even with that said, if you say, okay, we're going to take half of you guys, make you Native Americans, give you tribal land, and give you stipends every month or year, we're going to take the other half of you because we did put you guys in slavery, and we pretty much gave everybody other. You know, every other group money for reparations for any atrocities we had to their people. We even gave Jews who the Holocaust didn't even occur in this country. We gave them millions of dollars as well. But for your forefathers and, you know, ancestry mothers. that have done <laughs> that made this country the most powerful in the world. You get absolutely nothing. 
some people, some people, thank you, Jermaine. Some people are so hell bent on everyone else except for our own people. And this is the issue that we have. Right? So anyway, I don't want to rant to you, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm I'm going to talk to you tonight. Good evening, Sean. So with that being said, I want you guys, I want you to show you guys this right here. This is coming from the census bureau.gov or census.gov and it states here inequalities for persistent despite decline in poverty for all major race and hispanic origin groups then you jump down here this is not an old report this is only like a year and a half two years old it says two of these groups blacks and hispanics reached historic lows in the poverty rates in 2019 the poverty rate for blacks was 18.8 percent and for hispanics 15.7 why is this significant? Not the Hispanic number. Why is the Black American number significant? Because we've been in this country longer than anyone else, and we're still the poorest group. And why is that? I'm looking at the rates here. There's really nothing anyone can refute here. Is that Blacks, we're at the highest of the poverty line. And a lot of people would think that this is not by design. This is truly by design, and I'm going to break it down somewhat tonight and connect the dots for you guys to show you that just because something is not blatant doesn't mean that it's not occurring, doesn't mean that it's not real. So a lot of times, people have to come in your life, transform your life, give you insight, give you perspective, and head you on your way. To show you how to connect these dots. Really, I, you probably already have the dots connected. I'm just going to try to put it together so we can follow it, right? So I'm looking at this disparity of the high poverty rates for black Americans at 18.8%. And then I jump over to the executive order on White House initiative on advancing educational equity excellence and economic opportunity for who? Black Americans. I love this family. I really do. When someone's put your name in the title of a contract, it, it makes you feel like you're getting something, right? When someone puts your name at the top of the contract, you really think you're getting something but that may not be the case. That may not be the case. So in order to know that you're getting something, you have to read the contract. So what I did was I'm looking at my name. Okay, I'm looking at my name in the title. And now I need to read the, con the contract and make sure that I'm getting what you're saying that I'm getting. Okay. Let me see if I can do this. Let's look at this. Well, it says here in the initiative for economic opportunity for black Americans, it says monitor and support the development, implementation, and coordination of federal government educational workforce, research, and business development policies, programs, and technical assistance designed to improve outcomes for historically underserved communities, including black people. <laughs> including black people in your own plan. So who the hell is this addressed to? Who, who is this going out to? Because if you are including me, that means that I was not part of the original, okay? I was not part of the original contract, but the contract has my name in the title. The contract has our name in the title, but when you read it, it says right here in blue, it says development policies, programs, and technical assistance designed to improve outcomes for historically underserved communities, right? So underserved communities can be anyone. It can be absolutely anyone. That doesn't just mean black. But then it has the notion of going after the comma, and now it says including black Americans. Supposed to be our plan, but now it's including us. It's like inviting you, but not inviting you. It's like, hey, you can come, but don't show up. What?
But this is how politics tricks us time and time again. And I bet you're getting your booties to the pole, aren't you? This is the problem. See, I said this before. You, we, you, we should not be a party hoe. That's right, H-O-E. We should not be a party hoe going around letting the Democrats smash every time they're going to talk to us. No, you ain't smashing no more Democrats. That's the issue. And it's, and it's not about your political party. And what I mean by party hoe, it don't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat or independent. You're a party hoe. You, you, you're so committed to a Democrat or Republican or independent system that has consistently ignored you. Talking about I'm a Democrat. What does that mean? That only tells me that blindlessly you vote Democrat every single time. And the majority of people who are saying they're Democrats and politicians and this, that, and the other, have you been selected or appointed to a political position to call yourself such? No, that's just the party that you follow. But again, that is our advanced economic education executive order for Joe Biden and the Democrats. But let me ask you this. When we came out this plan, people were saying, see, Ross, they, they are doing something for black Americans. Like, and we understand they do everything for every other group, but they don't share that. When they do something for Asians, they don't turn around and just do it for Hispanics or blacks. They sure don't. But every time they think or they say they were doing something for black Americans, you start to realize that uh, it's for everybody else, too. Okay. And this is not old. This is June 03, 2020. They got, they got theirs before we got ours. It says advancing equity, justice, and opportunity for Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific, and Pacific Islanders. Okay. Well, let me go back here. This is the one for Black Americans. And it says including Black Americans. Doing a real uh, quick recap. Okay. Same thing, right? On advanced educational equity, excellent, and economic opportunity for Black Americans. So Asians get the same particular one as well. But see, we understand that when I highlighted that particular section, it said including black Americans, right? Let me see what they have on this particular one. Okay. As I direct in Executive Order 13985 of January 2021, advancing racial equity and support of underserved communities through the federal government, the entire federal government must advance equity and racial justice for underserved communities, which includes, okay, why is this significantly different? Because they're making sure that they point out Asian Americans and uh, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. That's what they're doing here. You're like, what? No, no, no. It's the same thing. No, it isn't, family. Which includes, they're letting you know that this group was already included versus a group, let me show you, that's now including Black Americans. I know it may go over some people's head because I dove deep into that. Well, let me move on. The next one, I guess Native Americans get as well. Executive order on the White House Initiative on Advancing Educational Equity, Excellence, and Economic Opportunity for Native Americans and strengthening tribal colleges and universities. Okay, so Native Americans get it as well. So Asian Americans, Native Americans, um, Native Hawaiians. Um, so not something just for us, family. They got it as well. Let me move on. Oh, executive order on White House initiative on advancing educational equity, excellence, and economic opportunity for Hispanics. So everybody is getting in on this. Everybody, right? Everybody is getting in on this. Everyone has the exact same executive order that we do. But then we're going to start to get into the point where Okay, so he's America's president because people love to bring that shoe out of the bag. Well, you need to know an America family that consistently year in, year out, they do things for other groups that don't include us. And then when they do something potentially for us, then you start to research and you see that it's actually for everyone else. That's the way it goes. Because as I look at these two executive orders right here, I want you to pay attention to the date. 
First and foremost, this is the one I just read, September 13th, 2021, right? Then the Biden Harris administration advanced equity and opportunity for Latin uh, Latino communities across the country, October 14th, almost a month later. I'm just showing you that significance because it's almost like, are they getting addish, additional coverage for the advanced equity plan, Hispanics? And listen, I'm pocket watching. I'm definitely pocket watching. I'm looking at Hispanic communities. I'm looking at Asian communities, Native American communities. But when we look at the statistic, it shows that 87 percent of black Americans voted Joe Biden in. He publicly said he had our back. I don't know what that means. Maybe I'm a little slow. I don't know. When you say you got my back, that means you're going to help me out somehow, some way. And that doesn't mean including everyone else. Right. But I see you're doing things for everyone else. See, regardless if you are a stronghold Democrat or a stronghold Republican, the things I speak, you cannot refute because you know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. But then there's this thing that people were saying, Will Ross, when you read the one for Black Americans about a week ago, you said that there's no money in it, but there is money in the Asian plan. So a lot of people didn't understand what I was referring to because some people commented me and they said, hey, we read it. I don't see no money in the plan. I said, well, let me help you out. Foundation launches $125 million to combat anti-Asian hate. We see, we start seeing how things are being connected. So this some sort of foundation is giving them $125 million for anti-hate, anti-Asian hate. Now, first and foremost, family, I'm not speaking against anyone here. I'm showing compare and correlation and I'm just showing you the facts, right? I'm not against Asians. I have Asian friends, you know, the, the whole things that make you look worse than what you was about to say. But my point being is that this is not against any community that I'll be talking about tonight. Because I know some people getting their feelings and getting their emotions and really don't understand how things work in this country. Because you can show them and they still can't see. Ain't that crazy? You can show somebody something and they still can't see. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me finish here. So we have the $125 million. Let's scroll down just a little bit here. Um, they started to talk about a lot of things in the Asian community uh, that I wasn't aware of, right? I wasn't aware of all these high crime rates in the Asian community. I'm, I'm joking, guys. They don't have high crime rates. <laughs> but they're talking about the discriminatory acts from other people that are abusing and uh, causing domestic violence against Asian people, right? It was a huge rise last year. I wonder what the percentage for Black Americans. Because we don't have that sort of thing. We have more, we have stronger and bigger issues like police brutality and, and police murder. That's what we essentially have. Even though we have the same issues that they're depicting in some of these stories that I went over, right? So you say, okay, that's 125 million, Ross, from a uh, uh, from a outside organization from any government. Touche. Touche. But then I read, Bound announced $49.5 million in grants to address Asian American xenophobia for $50 billion. Uh, excuse me, $1 million. $50 million from the government through a hate bill through a hate executive order 50 50 million so you're getting 125 million from an outside organization you get another 50 million so we're up at 175 million dollars to asian americans who are experiencing hate and xenophobia because black people been in this country since before it has started yeah we don't actually go through xenophobia and anti-black racial hate we don't we don't we're not discriminated upon no 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 that, that that doesn't happen to us does it family no we are good 
Let's look at something else. Biden announced new actions to curb an anti-Asian violence as NYC other cities reel from attacks. Hmm. The acts includes 50 million grant program from the Asian American Pacific Islander victims of social assault and domestic violence. 50 million. Hmm. I do declare. It says here that the new Biden administration efforts were unrevealed one day after a 65 year old Asian woman was viciously stomped outside a luxury apartment building in Hell's Kitchen. And the person said, F you, you don't belong here. They identify attacker shot of the woman during the attack, according to police. Um, I'm familiar of any cases like this happening in the black community where our elderly have gotten stumped out, killed, burned, dismembered, dismaimed. I mean, I haven't heard any stories like that. Nope. Not in our community. We don't have issues like that. I think Rodney King was a white man, right? Rodney King? Yeah, he didn't get beat up in something. Okay. I'm just pointing out some things here, family, because it's important. It's very, very important. So now we're up, what, $175 million? And I think there was another $50 million. So now we are up at, let's see here, we got about $111 million. Wait, there's more. California allocates $156 million to combat anti-Asian hate. People have been hating us damn near since the dawn of time. Whether it be the Spanish conquistadors or the uh, British colonizers. I won't say British, this wasn't the British, my apologies. The European colonizers, because we know that it was the Dutch, it was Germany, Belgium, Portugal, Spain, you name it. I, everybody was in there having a party colonizing um, the continent of Africa as well as the Caribbean islands with indigenous people. But I digress. But I'm looking at this family. California allocates $156 million. Right now we're getting to the point where we're at $300 million. We're at $300 million to combat anti-Asian hate. And then it says here, moving right along to the Native Americans, the U.S. government agreed to pay a total of $492 million to 17 American Indian tribes. Now, this story came out in 2016. That story came out in 2016. But the relevance I'm trying to give you is that Native Americans have a budget from the federal government. Last time I checked, $2 billion a year. Okay. So in 2016, they gave them an additional $492 million to the 17 federally recognized tribes, right? Stay with me here. Then, March 6, 2020, Senate Page's largest investment in the Native programs in history, more than $31 billion heading to Native communities. What's important about this? Black Americans, listen to this, Black Americans are in worse conditions than Native Americans. So if we want to make that divide, and let's just say hypothetically, which is, I know this is going to hurt a lot of people's ears, let's just take, for instance, that no Black person had Native American blood or wasn't Native American themselves, and we were just Black, and our ancestors built this country. Do we deserve anything? Land is worthless unless you build something on it. Anyway, what's in this bill? This particular one, Indian Health Services, because black people, we don't need better health care. No, 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 no. We don't need that. But anyway, they talk, they break down how all the hundreds of millions of dollars are going to the different programs. 104 million for improving health IT and telehealth access. That means that in the black community, our clinics are not falling apart. Our clinics in the black community aren't falling apart. We have new age technology. We have new world technology in our communities, don't we? We don't need this extra money. Let me move on. 
1.2 billion for housing programs because we know in the hood and we know in the ghetto it has the best apartment buildings that money can buy we know this we know that majority of black people we know majority of black people live in houses see this is what i like i like to show those people who voted for Joe Biden, you or you voted for Donald Trump, it don't matter to me. And then break those things down as like, uh, how is everybody getting something except for us? See, they can't explain that. They don't want to say that it's a system of white supremacy and racism and racial bias and blah, 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 blah right? You know all the, the key words, the terms that we use, right? So when I look at this, it's a laughing matter because we expect something to be different. Also, you subtract, what, $43 billion from the HBCU budget, but you turn around and give Native Americans $1.1 billion for tribal colleges and universities. I'm not hating. I'm not hating, but I'm definitely pocket watching. So this is not anti-Native American or Asian or, or Semite or Jewish or, or white. Or, it, it's not anti-anything. It's revealing the truth. It's taking the blanket off, okay? Because this is the problem is that our people, we don't understand what's going on because we don't have, we don't have the mental prowess. We don't have the discipline to sit down and look at a video so people can reveal the truth to you. We so worried about the next laugh. Everybody's laughing in a different position. Asians are the richest minority in America, and out of the Asians, Indians are the richest of the Asians, but Asians are the richest minority in America. Then come Hispanics, then come us. And we're going to get into the orders where they're talking about the Native American communities are poor, and I'm like, well, that's all up to the federal government because we know reservations of the Native American community are federally funded. The ones that are recognized are federally funded. So they better not be talking about none of them. They better not be talking about none of them. They're federally funded family. And just when you don't think it can get any worse than that, Native families are getting $1 billion. Now, it does say it through these child care programs and the TAMP grantees, okay? And I don't want to be too biased. But it breaks down $900 million for Bureau of Indian Affairs programs, economic and infrastructure investments. Like in the black community, we don't have potholes and the streets falling apart and the cement and the sidewalks are broken up. We, we don't have that in our community, right? I'm pocket watching. I'm not hating. I'm watching other people's pocket. You damn right. Because you went out and voted, and look what you got us. <laughs> Nothing. That's what occurred. Let me move on. I'm parking watching again. In the affairs begins disbursement of $900 million in American Rescue Plan funding to tribes across the Indian country. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. There you have it. So they get $31 billion separately, and now they're getting another $900 million. You know what? They, that's $32 billion. And they're taking that out of the American Rescue Plan. But they ain't doing that for us. No. It states here, it has begun, this is April 30th, so they already got the money. They have begun dispersing $900 million to federally recognized tribes under the American Rescue Plan Act. And then, of course, the notorious, I am deeply grateful to Congress and the administration for ensuring that Indian country is not forgotten in the nation's effort to overcome the COVID-19 crisis and build back better. They're getting better water. Flint, Michigan, I hope you're watching this, and other underserved, eh, eh, cross that out, other black communities that are not doing so well. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm referring to, the treacherous grounds within the hood that we don't have fresh water, but they get potable water delivery, $20 million, a housing improvement, another $100 million, Indian child welfare and other related expenses, related expenses, 
family, you know when they start speaking about that slush fund, that's related expenses because they don't have a name for them, right? $772.5 million. That's where we are. I'm parking watching. And just to make it even just a tiny bit better, President Biden's fiscal year 2022 budget makes significant investment in India Affairs Program. Budget, money, investment means money. The request for the Bureau of Indian Affairs is $2.7 billion. Six, oh, uh, let's just round this up to $610 million over the fiscal year 2021 enacted level. That means throughout the year, they will get additional funding, additional monies to Native Americans. I'm not hating on pocket watching. While we keep dancing the jig and coon, coon hunting and trying to take down our own people, everybody's getting paid. Except for us. You guys remember this story, right? Biden says 450,000 payments to families separated at southern border are not going to happen, right? That's what he said. That's funny he should say that because he says 450,000 per person. Is that what you're saying, the president? That's not going to happen. But you know what? The thing about when you listen to people talk, even me, it's not what they say. You heard this before. It's not what they didn't say. It's what they didn't say. It's not what they said. It's what they didn't say. So let's rewind it and let's play this part again. 450000 per person. Is that what you're saying? The president said, that's not going to happen. And then the next question that comes, family, what that means is they may get $400,000. They may get $500,000 because we don't think, because in the manner of which he said, we don't believe that's absurd, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he ain't giving them no $450,000. That's not going to happen. But he can absolutely say, I, I, that's not going to happen. Five hundred thousand dollars per person, and I know, I don't know. You have to, you have to wave the pendulum here. You have to go forward. You have to go back. But the point is, he didn't say he was not going to give them anything. Think about that. He like, no, they're not getting anything. He didn't say that. He just said they wasn't getting four hundred fifty thousand dollars per person. See that. Those are the things that you need to take into into the picture because you're like, no, that's not going to happen. We're not giving illegal immigrants $450,000 per person. We won't give them $500,000 per person. But they never finish the questioning, right? Because no one is being analytical about the words that Joe Biden is speak. So I'll go over and you say, well, illegal, then they can make them absolutely citizen with H.R. 1909, Citizenship for Essential Workers Act. And I went over this before, so I'm going to go right through this. And it's basically saying that Again, another legislation, another bill, okay? It says submits an application that satisfies the criminal and national security background checks and payment. And it's talking about illegal aliens, illegal immigrants, okay? And it talks about how they essentially do jobs that Americans don't want to do. And I've said this before. Except as provided in paragraph two, the aliens shall have at any point during the period described in subsection earn income for work in the following private, public, or non-profit sectors. Wait a minute, private, wait, 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 wait. earn income. So that means that you can be in a country illegally and actually the government will allow you to make money. See, I don't know any other country in the world where you can come in illegally, have a job, and then the government say, yeah, yeah, you're going to make your money, earn income. Because we understand that Americans, we always say that immigrants, right? Immigrants south of the border. They're just picking fruit and cutting grass. That we, 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 we don't want those jobs, right? That's that's all those native. Thus, all those Hispanic Americans are doing. Why did I say Hispanic Americans? Because this very, this very act that I'm reading is going to make them citizens. Because they're doing the jobs that 
Americans don't want. Let me point this out to you. So they said that we don't want to be in healthcare. We don't want to be nurses and doctors. We, 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 don't, want to, we don't want those jobs. We don't want to be an EMT, like emergency response, or part of a hazmat team. None of us want to be guardsmen. We just want, you know, the illegal immigrants to do this for us. Uh, restaurant owners. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you know, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, uh, those legal citizens of America. Yeah, we don't want restaurants. We want hotels or retail. We don't want to own agriculture and farms. We don't work in domestic work in private households and home residential commercial. Yeah, we don't want to do that. No, not at all. Not at all. We don't want none of those jobs. Because I didn't hear I didn't hear fruit picking. Did you hear that? I didn't hear fruit picking. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear just landscaping. I didn't hear that at all. I heard building houses and home care and you, you name it. They're doing it. They're doing damn near every job that we're doing. So what are you talking about? They may be doing it on a lower level because they're illegal. But then again, they still have those jobs. And I know that some of this I'm bouncing around. I just want to kind of keep it somewhat balanced, right? Too much straight and forward can actually be crooked. I want you to think about that on the way home. <laughs> too too much for too much straight and forward can actually be a little bit crooked. So I like to keep it balanced. But let me show you something very quickly of what your president, good old Joe Biden, we're talking about. The reason why I say that because you you coon bucking dancing, you guys don't know what's going on. The title of this legislation is improving public safety and criminal justice for Native Americans. In addressing the crisis of missing or murdered indigenous people. I'm proud to sign it. He's proud to sign it. Long overdue. Long overdue. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. When well, you don't think things are getting any better, family, they are. So Joe Biden signs a executive order on improving public safety and criminal justice for Native Americans and addressing the crisis of missing or murdered indigenous people. So agents get an anti-crime executive order, anti-xenophobia, Asian hate, blah, blah, blah. So does Native Americans. Executive order improving public safety and criminal justice for Native Americans. That's the same thing. But the added addition here yeah, I know that's a double positive. The added addition here, missing or murdered indigenous people. Missing or murdered indigenous people. So people are popping up missing, people are popping up murdered, right? Because we understand that we don't have an issue like that in the black community where a lot of our young black women are actually being kidnapped, right? And sold through the slave and sex trade. Now, that's a whole different video, but look it up. Then you'll absolutely understand that we have bigger problems than more people and not just America, around the world. But nonetheless, they get protection under the federal law with this particular executive order from Joe Biden on November 15th, 2021. So let me continue to point some things out to you, family. Because I want to make sure that we have, again, compare and correlation to certain things so I'm not just ranting and speaking with no actual facts or something to back it up, right? Even if it's anecdotal, I got something to back it up, right? So states here, racial issues behind cases of missing people of color. Let's see what they point out here. See, at the heart of the issue, hundreds of missing people of color who often don't get the same treatment. And we understand that they actually count Native Americans as people of color. So they're included into this, but let's see who they point out. It said, it's a stop in your face because my child was a good child and I just needed help, said Erica Jones, mother of Marquise Jones. Unfortunately, Jones is amongst the hundreds of black, brown, and indigenous men and women who have gone missing. Hundreds of blacks. Hundreds of black people have gone missing. And I'm just speaking up for the black community. I'm not speaking up for the brown community because I know they have people that speak up for them. You know, we're all holding our own nuts on this. We're all holding our own nuts on this one. So we have people that are missing, right? In large proportions, we have large numbers 
of men and women from the black community coming up missing. But out of the three, only one gives an executive order that they're going to start. And see, what you guys don't understand about federal protection is that they're going to have the FBI actually work on a case, which we know there's levels to this, to a local policeman, to a county cop, to a state trooper, um, to federal police, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you start talking about the FBI are going to investigate for you, you start getting results. You start getting results when you have the Federal Bureau investigators to come in and actually investigate things for you versus your local police, right? They have an unlimited budget when it comes to research. They have an unlimited budget when it comes to equipment. They have unlimited budget of agents that can go out and do the hardcore research. And these people have degrees from Yale and Harvard and, and Grambling, like prestigious, black, white, all sorts of colleges around the world. Excuse me. Yeah, colleges around the world. They have prestigious degrees. They're very intelligent people. So they get shit done. That is the significance of the Native Americans and the Asian Americans receiving an executive order of protection for the, for the federal government. When the federal government wants to find someone, they will find you. Let me tell you. When I was in the military, you guys seen UAVs, right? So they can just throw up a UAV. What's his last known address? Where's mama live? They will have people investigating your friends, investigating you. They will find you eventually because they know humans usually just got to call somebody they know. And they have all the best technology. I mean, if they wanted to, they could actually use the CIA, the Center for Intelligence Agency. They can use the NSA, the National Security Agency. America say we're free, but we have one of the most um, highly law enforcement countries in the world. We have more law enforcement agents than any other country. I mean, think about it. When you think about the four and three-letter agencies, think about it. That deals in law enforcement some sort of way. You got the CIA, the NSA, the FBI. Who else? DEA, ATF, <laughs> U.S. Marshals. I know you guys are going to name some in the chat. You see all the agencies I just named? <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. So that's why it's important to understand how we're going through this to connect the dots. Next, President Biden announces additional actions to respond to the anti-Asian violence, xenophobia, and bias. March 30th, 2021. Additional. Okay. We come here. This is the one prior to, but this is for who? Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. So the original one came out on January 26th and the new updated one with additional actions March 30th. And this is what Joe Biden has said. Too many Americans, too many Asian Americans have been walking up and down the streets and worrying. Waking up each morning the past year feeling their safety and the safety of their loved ones are at stake. They've been attacked, blamed, scapegoated, and harassed. They've been verbally assaulted, physically assaulted, killed. The conversations we had today with the AAPI leaders and that we're hearing all across the country is that hate and violence often hide in plain sight. Police brutality in the black community. Okay. And it's often met with silence. Yeah, white supremacy. That's been true throughout the history, but that has to change because our silence is complicity. We cannot be complicit. We have to speak out. We have to act out. President Joe Biden, March 19, 2021. Family, did you see any of that in your family? in your community, in your area, in your county that's dealing with 
non-police and police alike? Were there exercise of hate on you because the color of your skin, the texture of your hair? And don't forget, this is the additional actions because of the things that they went through. And as president, Biden said during his first primetime address, anti-Asian violence and xenophobia is wrong. It's un-American and it must stop. Now I want you to put something else in here. Replace Asian violence with black violence. So let me read it again. As President Biden said during his first primetime address, anti-black violence and xenophobia is wrong. It's un-American and it must stop. Now, doesn't that have a good ring to it? It almost have a better ring to it because I would like to believe that anti-black violence is absolutely at a higher rate than any other race in America and ethnic. Good evening, Alaska Skies, as well as KT. See, this is the problem that we go through, family, and it is takes someone to reveal to you that if you went out and voted for this administration or the last administration, that you is a wasted vote. Stop telling, stop having people to coax you into if you don't vote, then you don't have a voice. That's stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've heard anyone ever say to me. Hey, if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. I have a voice. I'm actually speaking right now. See, when you hold your vote, when you say, hey, I'm not going to vote unless you do something for us, then what's going to happen is they understand that you are exercising your power, right? You're just not going to go out to vote to vote. Someone's not going to convince you that your ancestors died and that is your civic duty to go out and vote. No. Your ancestors died for you the right to vote. That means you can do or not do. And your civic duty is just be you. That's it. So stop trying to have people to convince you or persuade you or manipulate you in any form of the matter. You read this shit for yourself, it's going to blow your mind. Because as we move along, memorandum condemning and combating racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against Asian Americans and Pacific, excuse me, and Pacific Islanders. And this came out January 26, 2021 as well. Moving along. Executive order preventing and combating discrimination of the bias of gender identity or sexual orientation. So, this is mostly directed at the LGBTI community. That's what this one is for. Federal protections under the law. And we understand that in all communities, there is some form of hate because of someone's race or gender orientation. Not gender orientation, but sexual orientation and gender identity. Because someone uh, says that they belong to a certain community, other people may demonstrate discrimination bias, hate, and violence. We understand this. That's not the problem here. Again, I'm not hating on any group that I'm speaking about today, but it's about the realization that the government is 1,000% ignoring the black community on all fronts, right? Any disparities in our community, ignore. No money. Everybody else gets the money. Police brutality, and, and just like the Native American bill, the criminal justice within the communities to help our communities to get back on par. No money there, no help there, no federal protections there. But LGBT, they get protections under the law. Again, I'm just comparing, not hating, right? Because when we look at these things, we look at Discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation manifests directly for four different individuals, excuse me, individuals, and is often overlaps with other forms of prohibited discrimination, including discrimination on the basis of race or disability. For example, transgender black Americans face high levels of workplace discrimination, homelessness, violence, including fatal violence. 
So automatically, we're talking about hate against LGBT. And for example, they said transgender black person. All right. But again, if you commit hate on a black person, does it really matter their gender? Now, it matters, and some of you are going to point this out, is it because they're gay and black? Gotcha. Right? <laughs> Let me move on. Enforcing prohibitions on sex discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation. Prohibit sex discrimination, including any that relate to the agency own compliance with statutes or regulations. Sex discrimination. So we have all these things that's pointing out in the LGBT community and how the government is defining themselves as an agency and that they will protect that community. Then it goes on on certain statutes. It also states here that, let me let you show you. I don't want to just read over your heads here. Agency means any authority of the United States that is an agency under 44USC.3501. They have the full power of the government if that didn't go over your head, right? Because they said any agency, and, and believe me, someone can call the CIA an agency. They can call the NSA an agency. Oh, wait a minute, National Security Agency. Oh, Central Intelligence Agency. You see how that works? The only thing you have to just read and, oh, that's an agency. That's an agency. So they essentially have the highest form of law enforcement in America to protect that community, right? No, no matter their race, right? Because, for example, transgender black men and transgender black women. Okay. So with that being said, 2020 saw a highest number of reported hate crimes in two decades updated FBI data shows. Let's go right down to it. As in past years, Black Americans made up the largest share. Black Americans made up the largest share. Black Americans made up the largest share of individuals targeted because of their race or ethnicity. Then it says here, but last year, individuals of Asian descent saw a 73% increase. What am I trying to get you guys to understand in this one particular news story? Anyone figure it out yet? Well, let me give you some guidance and assistance. In past years, in past, in past years, Black Americans made up the largest share of individuals targeted because of their race. In the past years, meaning more than one. Then it says, but last year, individuals of Asian descent saw a 73% increase. This is literacy. This is absolutely insane. The FBI admitted that in the past years that Black Americans had the highest hate crimes against them. But in one year, Asian Americans get an anti-hate bill. But they can't just do anything for one group, Sorry, right? Because you guys, you voted for Democrat. It's okay. Just don't vote it again, God damn it. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> How about, <laughs> just wait. Wait until they promise us protections under the law. Wait until they give us our reparations. If you re if you rewind the video, family, you'll see all the money that they're giving to every other group except us. Hmm. So where's the proof, Ross? You read a story from the FBI website. Where's the proof? And you guys know I go out and I search for the proof, for the information, because I want you guys to see it for yourself. This is FBI 
Crime Data Explorer. This is this is a .gov site. If you can see up here, family, that is .gov. And the reason why this is important that I always show you .gov to let you know that it's coming from the government and not just some random news story. So it, sta it states here, family, hate crimes in the United States incident analysis, right? They don't have the uh, stats for 2021, so we have to do 2020, even though the pandemic. It states right here to your far right, anti-Black or African-American, 2,871. And even if you can't see that well, you can see that the meter for the Black people in America is a lot higher than everyone else. So then I want to go down to the LGBT because we just got off of them, right? And you have 673 for anti-gay, anti-lesbian at 306, so we're around 900. Transgender mixed group, that's included with that, okay, so we're around 900. We come down to anti-transgender, that's another 200, so we're looking at 1,100 right now. Anti-lesbian female, we have another 100, we're looking at 1,200 family. So compared to us, we more than double the LGBT community whether they're including black people in that or not. We more than double. Just regular old people, just regular old black Americans. We more than double that number, but we still don't give executive order for protection, right? Then we go to the Asian community, because don't forget they got the anti-hate executive order for Joe Biden. It says here at 279, two, excuse me, 279, and that was during the pandemic, 279 versus 2,871. And last but not least, do not forget, and if I can find this, let me give me one second, because you guys probably didn't remember the Native American one. Let me see if I can find that one very quickly. Let me see if I can just find that one very quickly. Here we go. And the Native Americans also get a safety and criminal justice for Native Americans in addressing a crisis of missing murdered people. So they get public safety and criminal justice for Native Americans, and they're going to address the crisis of missing people, right? I wanted to show you that, fam, because it's important. Because on the list that I just went down, guess what Native Americans are at? At 96. And some of you are going to say, well, you need to compare the ratio of people against their population and then the number of cases. I know that. But take, for instance, we don't even count Native Americans, right? We go 2,871. Asians are 8% of the population. We are 13.4%. You do the math. We still have more than 500 cases. Boom. We'll still have more than 500 cases. Now, before I go to this next segment, I'm going to acknowledge some of your notes here. We have, I'm just going to call you 42. It says, until America stops drafting law specific to one ethnicity or another, we are all screwed. Everyone should have the same rights and protections. I do agree. KT speaks, I like hearing your perspective through your lens. We have different backgrounds, but similar thoughts, I suspect. Indeed, we do, sir. But for those of you who are anti-American, because of the government, don't be that. Because it's not that they give us any money or any protection or any resources or funding or potable water, doesn't matter, or any protection from the people who are supposed to protect and serve us. But they do do something for black people, right? You know what they do? Happy birthday, hip hop. August 11th, officially named Hip Hop Celebration Day. They gave us Hip Hop Day. So now we can dance, we can listen to music, we can get shot and killed by the police and white supremacists and that system of white supremacy, <clears throat> Kyle Rittenhouse. Because the only thing I asked somebody the other day about that particular case is I said, well, 
put a black teenager in that position. And let's say he killed two black men. Do you think he'll be getting off totally scot-free without any charges or any probation, any time served? Zero, zouch, zero, donut, nothing, nada. See, that's the system of white supremacy working at its best. That's all you have to ask yourself. If he was black and all you guys already know, you're like, hell nah. But don't worry. We get hip hop day. We also get a George Floyd statue. We don't get the George Floyd bill, but we get the George Floyd statue. And if you notice, we have our people here, everyone smiling and we got uh, probably the white people who built it right here to the right and everyone's happy and saying all sorts of great things. I have no idea why. It's a story a lot. Because if you don't get the protections under the law, if you don't get the executive order, if you don't get the George Floyd Act, then the statue means nothing. There's no backstory. There's no meat to it, right? Think about it, family. I just want you to think about it. Let's look at it one more time. So they put the act up and try to pass it through the House and Senate. You know the regular process, right? Let me show you. If I can find this one page here, let me show you how this works. Very quickly. First is introduced. And it has to pass through the House, pass through the Senate, and then the president signs it, and then it becomes law. You see that? That's how it works. Very, very easily, right? Step by step by step. But it got introduced. It didn't even get passed the House, the George Floyd Act. So it's just a statue of a black man who got choked out by the police and killed. That's all that is right now because it represents nothing. Why in the hell are we happy? We should not be happy about nothing. See, this is how they play with us with symbolism. Oh, we're going to do a statue of George Floyd so they can remember how the police killed him. And now one police officer out of the many went to jail for the rest of his life. Or is it just 25 years? But we didn't pass the legislation. We didn't let the bill go forth so this won't happen again. But we'll let you have a statue. Oh, and don't forget, while you're at the statue, listen to some hip hop. Celebrate your day. Then I had some people early on this year. They had a nerd to talk about this bullshit right here. Juneteenth. Get the hell out of here. We celebrating the day they let us out of slavery. Are you serious, family? They gave us, man, they gave us a day off. Everybody gets the day off. <sighs> President Biden signed legislation on Thursday to make Juneteenth a federal holiday, a federal, not a black holiday. Everybody's getting off. Enshrining June 19th as a national day to commemorate the end of slavery in the United States. So we're celebrating that our slave owners let us out. Sounds like defeat. Sounds like defeat. Now, of course, every one of us going to take the day off. I know I am, but that's not the point. A little gut check, right? Because I like to be honest. But it's once it again, it's symbolism, family. It has no meat. Let's get a day off. End of slavery. You didn't get reparations, right? Like everyone else. You didn't get protection under the law, like everyone else. You didn't get initiative, opportunity for education, excellence, and blah, 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 blah. And money actually tied to it like everyone else. That's the point. They give us things that we can't use. They only give us things that we can celebrate. They don't give us resources. They don't fix our communities. They don't use federal funding and budgets to come in and build up infrastructure with the America Build Back Better plan. Let's see, let's see 
with this American Build Back Better plan that Native Americans are already been receiving $900 million. Let's just see if the hood get better. Let's see if the roads get fixed. Let's see if the sidewalks get mended. Let's see. Family, I just want you guys to think about this. I just want you to think about this. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake, wake, wake up out of your I just want you guys to think about it. You guys have a great and wonderful night. I'll see you on the next one.